welcome to the webinar. Hopefully um, everybody can hear me correctly. Um, today's webinar is going to be on wars, floors, <laughs> walls, floors and ceilings <laughs> in version 12. Um, apparently I, I can't pronounce things anymore. Um, yeah, so uh, this uh, webinar is uh, going to be... Uh, oh man, lost my place. Um, <laughs> okay. So the... Um, we're all pretty used to using walls in version 11.1, um, but version 12 introduces some new features um, like the ceiling and floor tools under the insert tab up here, um, as well as a refresh of the wall tool, a um, lot of changes to the interface within the wall tool as well. And that's what we're gonna be going through today. Um, so, just before I begin, uh, this is the structure we're going to be following for the webinar. Um, we're going to start by going through just generally how the ribbon tools work, because a lot of um, users tend to uh, not have a good grasp of actually how these tools uh, work, how we can actually manipulate them and save um, changes and use them later. Um, after that, we'll go through the wall tool and the ceiling tool and the floor tools features before we actually learn how to use them, um, because I'd like to show off sort of what's going on, what's new about them, and then get into the really uh, interesting stuff. So, um, let's see, just before I start as well, um, on your interface that you can see at the moment, you should see a QA and a section. Um, here's where you can actually ask questions during the webinar. Um, I will hopefully be able to answer them at the end, but there should be some other texts um, alongside me that are able to answer any questions you have at the time. Awesome. Um, and just getting used to the uh, position I'm in here. Um, all right, so how the tools work in general. Um, beyond, uh, sorry, today we're going to be using these three tools mainly, the wall tool, the ceiling tool, and the floor tool, which you can find under the insert tab. Uh, we're used to seeing the wall tool here, but these are the new ones, um, ceiling and floor. Um, yeah, uh, essentially these tools follow the same rules as quite a few other tools that we have up here, especially under the annotate tab. Um, essentially the concept is that if you uh, right click on, uh, what's a good example, the wall tool, uh, in this list we have a few different options for presets that have been uh, pre-saved for the wall. Um, for example, I can go ahead and hit the uh, edit wall height option for the wall tool. Uh, and this will bring up our generic wall tool. Um, so if I double click on this, uh, this is the wall tool we're used to. However, if I right click on this button again and choose my wall tool version 12, which is the one we're gonna be focusing on today. And yes, I do want to start a new wall and draw one of them over here. Uh, we can see that the interface has changed. So depending on what we actually choose in that drop-down list, we'll actively change the um, settings that we have for the tool. Um, just like under the annotate tab, uh, we can physically change. Um, we have other options in here for the dimension tool, like um, different colors. Um, for instance, the dimension tool for um, blue, dimensions, click on here and here, uh, or, you know, green dimensions. It's all about um, a list of options that are preloading settings within these tools. Um, and if I format the dimension tool here, for instance, you can see that it's just a matter of settings underneath the tool when I hit format dimension tool um, that are actively changing um, and changing how it appears on the plan. Speak louder. Okay. Um, okay, so, <laughs> um, hang on, where was I? Yeah, so um, essentially that's how um, wall tools, oh, sorry, uh, ribbon tools work. And another thing we can do uh, is format the tool while we're using it. Right click and format the wall tool. Um, for instance, the wall tool, I can change the height to 2000. Uh, so I can change um, my settings in the wall tool, place it down, and that actively changes 
uh, the height of my walls on the plan. And I can actively save after I've made these changes to add to this list of options we have down here. So just for an example, I'll hit save as, and I'll call this Mason test. Save. And now I'll just press yes to that for now. Um, I'm going to go and right click on my wall button again. And there it is, Mason test, ready to be used again in the future. All right, so um, in general, that's how the uh, tools on the ribbon work. However, um, let's go to the next slide here. Um, and I'll start actually going through the wall tool itself. Now, um, we already have a, a wall placed on the plan right now. Um, and if I double click on this, we can get an idea of what's going on. So I'm just going to put this in um, 3D textured view. For now, you can see it's um, it has a texture to it. Um, great to, yeah. So um, essentially, right away, you can see it's it's quite different from the wall tool that we've been uh, used to in 11.1. Um, everything's a lot simpler in here. Um, so. If I start with the uh, wall dimension tab, you can see we can change the height of the wall. We've already done that once, but um, it's pretty simple. Type in the height, press enter or tab, and it will uh, change the actual settings of the wall, 100 mil from the ground, um, and that elevates the wall, thickness of the wall. Very easy, um, easy to use, only three options in here. And also uh, this tick box, which is a really awesome tick box. <laughs> We haven't had this for a while. Um, the generic wall tool from 11.1 .1 that we're used to would listen to the height of your ceiling in the drawing properties, which have appeared on the other screen, the drawing properties under job defaults, the ceiling height. Um, now, if you broke the connection to the drawing properties, um, uh, on the previous tool, it was very, very hard to link that back to the drawing properties again. But now we have a real tick box <laughs> that just immediately switches it back to listening to the drawing properties. Um, and that's the ceiling height, not the uh, overall kitchen height, which uh, decides the height of your wall and tall cabinets. All right. So, um, yeah, very basic in here. Not too much you need to change, but you don't actually need so many controls there. Um, so let's go to the line display settings. They relate mainly to how the wall appears on the plan. Have a look at my massive wall here. Um, I can actively change, uh, if I click off of it for a second, it's probably a bit easier to see. Um, we have the line style, which when I change it to maybe a dashed style, you can see it's actively changing the appearance on the plan, or I can turn off those lines. Um, I can change the colors, we have a cool slider. So if I want the uh, line to be green, there it is, it's green, um, et cetera. Bit of blue in there, changes it to a cool cyan color. Um, this is only for the line. The next tab, infill display settings, actually um, actively changes the infill, the actual interior of the wall shape. So if I choose you know, different color in here, maybe even more blue would be nice. There you go, bright blue. Uh, wall compared to my other one that I have going on over there. So, um, yeah, all just about uh, how it appears on the plan. There's some really cool designs in here that you might want over your usual uh, wall design. Um, and it's all about just making your work look a little, little bit uh, more original, more professional. Um, but when it comes to the wall color tab, this one's a really cool one um, with a whole heap of improvements compared to the uh, generic wall tool. It's much simpler in here. All we need to do while we're on solid color is use the sliders to find new colors for our walls. Um, a really good gray that my boss recommended was a uh, 200, 200, 200 um, value in each red, green, and blue colors. I think the max would be 255 for each one of these. But yeah, actively um, you can change the solid color of the wall much easier this time than, than last time. Um, and then uh, you also have a, a reflective button, um, though I won't go into that too much just yet. Um, and then instead of solid color, if you want a texture on the wall, all you have to do is tick the box. Now, uh, this UI is yeah much easier to use than the generic wall tool, the one that we've been used to. Um, all you have to do is hit browse for image. 
and it lets you search your computer for a new texture to show on the wall. At the moment, I have the brick texture. Um, and all that is, when I hit Browse for Image, is a JPEG image found in the wall section of our bitmap folder inside the Cabmaster um, file location. Uh, inside the wall tool, uh, in the wall folder, uh, we'll see uh, the different folders here, subfolders, and then we have under that bricks, um, as well as a couple of other cool designs in here, stone that's like cobblestone, um, bit of timber. So um, a few options in there, but you're normally greeted with this section, which means that you can actually go into our cabinet section too, and maybe the and you'll find the usual brands and colors that you've been using for your materials day by day in your kitchens. Uh, for instance, you'd probably find the Dulux colors in here. Maybe I want Whisper White for my wall. There you go, now my wall's Whisper White. So um, yeah, you can use this for solid colors as well as cool textures. Um, although a solid color is not easy to see the um, texture pattern part. So I'll go back to my bricks for now. Um, when you have a texture like this, we can actually decide how we're going to display it. I can tick the fill button and it will automatically stretch my um, picture across the wall in the <laughs> most accurate way. Yep. Um, or if I go tile, um, I can actually choose how many uh, times this picture gets repeated across the wall um, and sort of the size that we're going for. So if I make this 800 by, I don't know, 300, see how it's actively changing the appearance of the bricks on the wall. Um, so you get a lot more control like that, and you can make it look a lot more realistic when you do that. So um, that's a nicer one, unless you find yeah, a picture that can get stretched to the size of your wall and still look realistic, that's completely fine as well. Um, you also have some other controls in here if you want to use them, like um, flip, flip the image, although sometimes it's kind of hard to see it considering picture is pretty symmetrical. <laughs> so, um, and you also have a transparency um, option in here if you want to, if I do like 50%, although yeah, I think you have to tick the box. Anyway, last thing, um, we do have a little uh, control over here as to whether or not you want to see the wall from the back in 3D, which is nice because um, back in the generic wall tool, it was a little bit difficult to uh, stop it from showing in 3D. It was another tick box, but um, just not as easy to find. Awesome. Um, so let's have a look at the ceiling tool. Um, let's see, where am I? There we go. So um, I've already placed the ceiling here. I'm just going to double click on this one for now to have a look at it. And you can see there's my little 3D, oops, uh, that's better. My little 3D render there um, has the ceiling. It's sitting above the wall by default. And obviously later I'm going to go through how to actually place the wall um, and the ceiling how to place the ceiling. Um, but at the moment, I'm just going to have a look at the user interface. At the moment, I've chosen a white Pompeii uh, color for my um, ceiling. But we have a few different options in here. You could even go one of the ones that we know we used for uh, the uh, wall tool um, or the previous walls that we had under the CM Design Library. Um, or let's see, what else do we have? A few different colors in here different options for the ceiling texture, as well as their repetition across the um, across the ceiling, <laughs> um, just like the wall tools texture. Yeah, let's have a look in 3D. It's probably easier to see in 3D. Wait a minute. Okay, so uh, we can see there is a tick box over here as to whether or not, there we go. Come on. There we go. Right, so you can see my new texture, and you can see it's it's uh, being repeated a very tiny uh, amount of times. If I change this to like 600 by 600, there we go. Um, yeah, now um, you can see that the um, texture changes on the ceiling. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we also have the height dimensions over here. Height off the ground, pretty easy to change, like um, 2400 if you want to lower the height of the ceiling compared to the walls. We also have a thickness option over here, uh, which I'm going to go into a little bit more later as well. But um, you can actively change the thickness of it. Um, and something else I'm going to go into more detail with later when we actually start using this ceiling um, is 
these options here for a sloped ceiling and an independent ceiling. Those are really cool. So we'll come back to those momentarily. But that's the uh, general UI of the ceiling tool. Um, and it's very basic, very simple, only what you need um, and very easy to use. So um, if we go to the floor tool, floor tool is actually very similar. So I'll just double click on this one for now. Very similar to the ceiling tool. If I go into 3D here, you can see I have my floor. And I'm choosing a texture. I can choose my thickness if I want to. 100 mil off the ground. See, so it's a uh, thicker object on the floor. You can even raise the floor if you need to, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, the texture and the same sort of idea about repeating the texture across the floor. Um, this will take some trial and error until it actually looks the way you want it to, because you know you can get pretty crazy, but sometimes it doesn't look as realistic um, when you don't have the, uh, the correct measurements here. Um, and that reflective, yeah, I think it maybe it only affects 3D renders better. All right, so back to plan. Um, yeah, floor tool, ceiling tool, very similar in design, much simpler to use, not as many um, options because we don't need them. So awesome. All right, so placing walls. Um, hang on, where is my slide? There we go. So that, yeah, uh, essentially we've gone through sort of the user interface for each of these tools. Um, and if I go back to the wall again on this one, um, they're all designed to be a lot easier to use. Um, than the generic wall tool. Um, but let's see if they're the same when we place them on the plan. So I've got a blank drawing here. Um, now this part, I'm sure plenty of customers are going to be uh, quite used to, but um, I'd like to go through it anyway, just for new customers. Um, essentially, there are a few ways to place a wall. I'm going to click on the wall button up here first. Um, and Right away, the quickest way, I can just start clicking anywhere on the plan and letting go of left click. And it will actively put edges of my wall in between the points where I've clicked. That's an easy way, but it's quite hard to get accurate. So um, I will um, start a new wall. Now, um, just as I go to start a new wall, you'll probably have already noticed that when I click on the button up here for the wall tool, um, oh, actually, I've, delete, <laughs> I've deleted the wall, so it doesn't really matter. Um, all right, but um, say if I already had a tool, uh, a wall, sorry, on the plan, and I go and click the wall tool again, uh, it asks me whether or not I want to start drawing a new wall or if I want to keep adding to the one that I already have on the plan. Um, yeah, pressing yes means that I will start a separate wall down here that's not connected to my previous one. Pressing no means that my next click is going to be connected to my last one. So I thought I'd bring that up uh, just in this particular situation because we need to make a new wall, but apparently that doesn't pop up if you <laughs> already deleted the last one. Awesome. So um, back on the wall again, next uh, way you can actually uh, create the wall is by holding left click from one point and dragging it across. Um, you can draw, let go of left click and it will drop the wall exactly where you left it. Um, if I drag across again and hold shift on the keyboard, it will let my wall stay straight. You can see I can move the mouse a lot. Um, if I move it too far though, it will start doing it at a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle all the way around like that. So um, easy way to do an angled wall, but um, still not the most accurate way to draw your walls. Um, the last one, which is the most accurate way, is by starting a new wall, clicking somewhere on the plan, letting go of left click, and then going up to the movement menu up here with the red arrows, uh, which allows me to type, a, type in a value, choose an arrow that we have um, available here, maybe to the right, and it will automatically send my wall at the exact length that I typed in here in the direction I chose. Awesome. So uh, yeah, much uh, easier way to draw my walls down. Um, bear in mind, in Cab Master, you will need to draw your walls in a clockwise direction around the page. Uh, because as you can see, 
uh, there is actually a difference between the back and the front of a wall. And if I draw the wall in, start a new one here, in an anti-clockwise direction, my dotted line for the front of the wall is on the outside of the kitchen, which actually will affect how it looks in 3D too by default. So you can see it's by default invisible from the back. Um, and so, yeah, it's important to draw your walls clockwise. Otherwise, you'll get something strange happening. Uh, that being said, the angled walls, which I'm about to get into, um, follow a different direction. <laughs> uh, so on this next slide, we're going to start talking about angled walls. Um, now, I have an angled wall already here, just as an example, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, all right, so say if I wanted to draw my wall, straight and then go down this way on a 45 degree angle. Um, now technically I could um, you know hold shift and drag it like this um, but then I won't get an accurate measurement. Well I mean unless I really I'm really careful on that slider there it's hard to get an accurate measurement while dragging the mouse like that. So I will start a wall again, grab a new wall, and I'm going to start using our most accurate way of creating walls, the movement center. I want to go two meters to the right. And then say if I wanted to go in this direction um, on a 45 degree angle, my first initial thought would be to type in 45 degrees here and hit this cool button here, move at angle, but it goes in the wrong direction. Um, the reason why it's going in the wrong direction is because of this compass here. All angles in Cabmaster follow this compass. Um, it's available on the knowledge base to find this um, compass. I think I'll link that in uh, the YouTube video. <laughs> but um, it, essentially, all of the walls follow this compass, and they are or the directions of the wall. So the angles of the wall go backwards, anti-clockwise, to which way you're actually meant to draw them. But so in this scenario, going from here to there in two meters. If I wanted to go on a 45 degree angle in this direction, I'd actually need to figure out what compass direction I'm looking at on this compass. Um, so I can use a little bit of maths. Oops, um, I might just go no, and keep drawing that one. Use a bit of maths here to figure it out. Um, I'm gonna go 360 minus 45 degrees up in this set angle box up here. 360 minus 45 and hit tab and we can see it's 315 degrees and if i hit move at angle it goes in that direction so um, 45 degrees in that direction on this compass is 100, uh, 315 degrees like that um, you'll notice that if i go to the annotate tab and i do an angular dimension on this wall it says it's a 135 degree angle. Um, that's because the overall angle in relation to the original wall and the uh, new wall is 135 degrees, but the, the angle, you, angle you're actually uh, looking at, 45 degree angle, is uh, angular dimension from here to there, 45 degrees. So Technically, uh, yeah, in relation to the previous wall, the next wall is at 135 degrees, but it has moved from our original axis by 45 degrees. So that's why it may be confusing when you put an angled dimension in. All right, so get some of this stuff off the page. Um, yeah. So yeah, very good compass to keep in your um, uh, in your repertoire. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so. Um, Next thing I'm going to talk about is actually altering walls once they've been placed down on the page, because we do get that a lot. We get calls about this a lot um, in the support team, um, where essentially we would like to, um, like once we've placed the wall, we want to maybe extend the wall, for instance. So here's one I've already placed. I'll right-click on it. Uh, length, uh, sorry, in this right-click menu, you can see I've got that little picture there. I've highlighted them. Um, there are two options in here called change length right and change length left. Another thing that we uh, find very useful in the support team um, is say I've drawn a wall 
like this and we need another wall going in this direction um, I can actually add a corner right click and add a corner to the wall and that lets me um, physically bend the wall and you know say if I want to go up there um, and it creates now three edges to the wall I'm then free to grab this one move it down etc um, and maybe be a bit more accurate of course at any time I can actually use the red arrow menu up here to move things more accurately like that cool uh, and anything else about adding them no, that's cool um, actually one other thing with the uh, add corner option is that I will be using this again in a second for curved walls if I go add corner it actually because it's splitting up the wall into two different edges I can manipulate each side individually which will come up a lot in this section curved walls so if I want to curve the wall very easy simply choose the edge that I want to curve right click and curve the edge now I can move my mouse to choose or I can type in a radius doesn't really matter 3000 like that or add another wall uh, if I have I'm just going to start going a little bit quicker now <laughs> um, have a um, corner in my walls I can always right click and fill at the wall fill it corner and there are a few other um, options in that menu uh, in that right click menu that may come in handy when curving walls um, let's see Oops. Start a new one. Okay. Oh, actually, um, so this is my straight wall. I can actually add a corner to it. Hold Shift to keep it straight and in line with my previous one. And now that's separated my wall. I might choose the left hand side of my wall, right click and curve the edge like that. And then I can go back to this other side of my wall. And right click and curve the edge the other way like that so that's uh, one way of making some cool shapes with the walls um, let's see all right uh, but yeah essentially um uh, probably the easiest way would be to create a square version of the curved wall that you're after like say if it goes in strange directions like that and you can either curve the edges or fill at the wall uh, fill at the corners as you like Um, fill it corner cool all right um, yeah so very easy to curve the walls just need to right click on them now sloped walls <laughs> um, sloped walls can get quite difficult actually um, and for sloped walls we can't actually use my wall tool uh, version 12 just yet so I'm going to go back to the generic wall tool uh, which can be found under edit wall height here and I'm going to draw a wall um, double click on the wall you can see we're back in the uh, back in the user interface that we are used to um, in version 11.1 .1 and previous um, if I head to the main uh, part that I would like to discuss is the height section um, there are a couple of changes that we made in here like there's an image <laughs> now that's kind of new um, but the main option that I want in here is the sloped part um, now theoretically if I was to click this sloped button um, you can see there is now two points um, for the top of the wall if I change this point to 600 for instance you can see we're sloped from 600 to 2700 now what's actually happened there when I ticked sloped was this box is holding the value for the next part of the wall um, now this is easy to demonstrate when I have more than one uh, section of this wall so if I go one section there and then my next section here for instance and then I can double click on the wall again this drop down menu allows me to choose either edge one or edge two because this wall is split into two it's probably easy to see in wireframe view or hidden view so it's split into two halves um, so if I select edge one and slope it 
make this 600 millimeters. The height on my left hand side is 600, but that 2700 actually refers to the height of my second edge over here. So if I go in this uh, drop down and choose number two, you can see the height of my second edge is at 2700. Of course, if I change this to 2400, it will drop back on edge one, drop the height that my first wall is sloping up to, to 2400. So that, um, yeah, uh, that little, if I tick sloped on this second one, that little uh, height in the top right is actually just the next part of the wall that we're sloping to. Uh, now, this is my second edge of the wall. It's my last edge. And so that is sloping to the height of the end of the wall, the end. And that can't be sloped, though it, um, as you can see, it's, yeah, it's physically the end point of the wall. As you can see on the plan, it's kind of, uh, that was a bad example. This one, that last dot there. Awesome. So easy to slope. Um, let's go. Oh, yeah. So um, technically, you can slope the end. Oops, uh, 600 like that. Um, and it actually drops down the finishing point of the wall. And therefore, the edge 2 now slopes from its height down to 600. So yeah, it is possible to slope the end. <laughs> um, awesome. All right. Um, and then, you know, we've got our um, general controls in here for um, using the walls. You can reverse them. Uh, but generally, uh, a lot of customers call us up uh, stuck on the concept of uh, wanting to slope a wall in another direction instead of just from left to right. Um, and it's all about that concept of you have the height of the start of your edge and then up here, the uneditable from this menu height of the next part of the wall. Awesome. All right, so I'll go now to placing the ceilings because we've covered pretty much all of the wall features. Um, so we'll go to this new ceiling button again. Um, just to show you, it's a yeah, cool UI. Um, now, when I right click and format the wall, uh, ceiling tool, you can see it's gone blue because I'm looking at the tool. Because I'm looking at the tool. <laughs> it's blue because I'm looking at the tool. Sorry, I'm being a bit quiet there. Um, all right. And uh, technically, when I'm placing my ceiling, it is as easy as clicking at random points on the page. And as you can see, I'm creating a 2D shape on the plan. And if I go into 3D, you can see that Cabmaster is filling in that 2D shape as a um, as a ceiling. So every time I click, it's creating or adding a corner point to my ceiling. Get rid of that for now. You don't have to uh, place it in random places on the uh, on the plan. You can actually snap them to the corners of your walls. So I go to that corner of the wall, and that corner of the wall, and that corner of the wall. Though that's a strange one. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that's better. Huh. I wonder why I was doing that. Okay. Um, so you can see that the 2D shape is connecting all of our three points. And now if I want to do a fourth one, I can actually just hold shift and then hold left click and drag my corner down. And you can see at some point it's going to snap in line with the others. So yeah. Uh, now we have our 2D shape, which has been automatically filled in by um, ceiling space. Very easy to use. You can also use under insert the uh, movement menu if you really want to. You know, 2200 that way, 2200 that way, 2200 that way. It's probably easier as well in case you don't have walls to um, piggyback off of. Uh, one other thing while I'm talking about the wall tool. Uh, ceiling tool, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying the wrong wrong name, um, is things like dropped ceiling boxes are fairly easy um, because um, I can actually just add a second ceiling over the top of my first one and start utilizing some of the options that we have in the user interface. So there we go. We have a, a sort of second square on top of our first one. Um, and if I 
go back to 3D now. Uh, we can see, you can't really see it right now. I'll change the thickness to maybe 200 millimeters. And right now you can see it's probably sticking up out the top. And all I have to do is move the height down a little bit. And there it is, there's my drop ceiling box ready to, you know, be used. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, and the other thing, uh, while I am talking about ceilings, is if I wanted to do a delete that um, a sloped ceiling, that's also very easy. So I'm going to click on the corners of my wall. I'm going to keep doing that apparently. There we go. And I'm going to just make another square wall. I'm going to double click on my wall and go back into 3D. Uh, and now we can talk about the little buttons I skipped earlier, the sloped option. Um, now, I really love this sloped option. It's, it's really easy to use. You can either choose uh, a slope from left to right or top to bottom. Um, so if I go top to bottom, you can see it's changed the direction of the slope, although it's kind of hard to see from here. There we go. Now you can see it. Um, yeah, so left to right, top to bottom, very easy. Um, and then you can choose the height of our two sides of the ceiling. You know, if I want the top of this ceiling to be at 2800, just type that in, that moves that one up. If I want this one to be down at 1000, I can always do that. Very easy. Um, there is another option here, independent, which lets you go pretty damn crazy with the, um, uh, with the height positions of each corner of your wall, which I don't think uh, will come in handy unless you're doing a really alternative looking kitchen. <laughs> uh, oops. But yeah, you can do some really crazy things in here if you want to. Um, and you can see it automatically puts sort of a, a flat edge between the corners. It's really cool. But um, yeah, the sloped one's way too easy to use. <laughs> Much better than, uh, yeah, than we've had so far. So that's really cool. Um, and last thing, if I go to the floor section, back to the plan, uh, insert the floor tool. The floor tool works exactly the same. Um, click anywhere you like. Uh, you should probably draw that clockwise, but it technically doesn't really matter for this one. It does matter for the walls though. Uh, back in floor again, click on the walls corners. Every time. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, got to zoom in on the corner. And then if I hold down left click, there we go, back to 3D, there's my floor. That's a um, texture on it right now, so I can go back into the tool, maybe choose a timber grain, oops, and back to 3D again, oops, not elevation view, that one, 3D, and then we're back into that. Uh, same area we were before. Uh, we can change the tiles, um, etc. You can technically move the uh, or change the thickness uh, so to make some sort of a box over here if you need to. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's it. Easy to place, easy to use, really cool um, idea for a well, not idea. Um, yeah, just a really nice UI. Um, for these tools up here in the insert tab. Um, yeah, and uh, they're going to come in handy once version 12 gets released. Um, at the time of this webinar, uh, yeah, um, at the time of, of this webinar, version 12 actually hasn't been released yet. Um, as we're currently on build, uh, oh, just for anyone who wanted to know how I made this, <laughs> there it is. Um, it's kind of a cool looking thing that oh, I took that photo no copyright um, so yeah uh, version 12 hasn't been released yet uh, it is just around the corner um, and you should be keen um, to use these new use these new features uh, in version 12 it's certainly very fun to use so um, yeah I think that will just about cover it uh, did we get any questions in the chat does anybody have any questions because um, that would be great to hear uh, if anyone who's watching has any questions? We'll wait around and see if we do. Just for a moment. I think I've pretty much covered everything. All right. 
Cool. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys, um, and have a lovely day, and hopefully we'll uh, see you all using version 12 very soon.